the coolest thing I learned this week is that a lot of what we like visually see in the world is basically just a hallucination. Hi, my name is Matt Hershberger. I write about facing a bleak world with hope, curiosity, and imagination. If that sounds like your thing, give me a follow. So my source for this is Helgoland, Making Sense of the Quantum Revolution by Carlo Rovelli. Uh, Rovelli is a renowned theoretical physicist. He is also one of the best science writers alive today. So what he talks about in his book is this recent discovery in neuroscience uh, about the way that the eyes work. So, you know, you would think that your eyes take in light and then they send all of the information that comes and hits the retina to your brain and then your brain constructs an image of what it's seeing. And what neuroscientists have discovered is that actually many, if not most, of the messages that are being sent are not from your eye to your brain, but from your brain to your eye. So what this means for us is crazy. It means that our brain is actually telling our eyes what it expects to see based off of past experience, and our eye is only really offering a corrective when the thing it sees isn't what our brain expects. So if you're like looking up at a tree, a lot of that is just your brain saying like, this is what I know this tree looks like. If a squirrel jumps through, then your eye is telling you like, oh, this thing happened that wasn't what we expected. Just to read you a little bit from the book, this could be the way in which the brain operates in general. In the model known as PCM, projective consciousness model, for example, the hypothesis is that consciousness is the activity of the brain constantly attempting to predict the input that constantly varies because of the variability of the world and the change of our position. Representations are techniques to minimize mistakes in predictions using observed discrepancies. In the words of the 19th century French philosopher Hippolyte Taine, we can say that, quote, external perception is an internal dream which proves to be in harmony with external things. And instead of calling hallucination a false perception, we must call external perception a confirmed hallucination. Now, I love this book, but I still do not understand quantum physics at all. Uh, but one of the coolest things that he kind of talks about in it is that a lot of the things that we see as like attributes of the physical world outside of us are things that are only that way because of our relationship to them. So to give you an example, if I were to ask you to describe what the sky looks like, the first thing you would probably say is that it's blue. But the sky isn't blue to an animal that doesn't have the ability to see blue wavelengths. It would be some other color. And so that thing that we think is the most fundamental aspect of the sky is something that is only that way because of its interaction with our senses. Another thing that we know is that, like, if you have a table in front of you, we know that most of what makes up that table is actually empty space if you get down to, like, the atomic level. It's mostly just gaps between protons and electrons. But we know because of the forces that we can't pass our hands through the table. So the fact that the table is solid is not its actual state. It's just our relationship to the table. So all of the stuff that you see and that you sense and that you hear and that you smell is not the actual state of the world. It's just your brain's attempt to try and make sense of what it's experiencing out there. Uh, so a lot of what you're seeing and experiencing is in a very real way, just a hallucination. Uh, and I love it when science gets all trippy like that. Anyway, if you're into that, read Helgoland by Carlo Rovelli. He also wrote a great book called The Order of Time, which is 100% worth checking out if you wanna get into more like trippy science.